There's been a lot of uh, commentary about uh, pipes transactions. Um, frankly, personally, I, I, I don't think you should be ideological about it. I don't think there's anything wrong per se with investments into listed companies, particularly in a market like India where the threshold for listing is actually quite low. So you do have many situations where companies are listed uh, and yet promoters may find it difficult to access further capital from the same public markets. And so they need to uh, go back to private equity and, and receive the kind of support which private equity can really offer. So what are we talking about? We're talking about longer term investments. Uh, we're not talking about the hedge fund kind of investment. We're talking about slightly longer term investment. We're talking about support that private equity players can provide on operations, um, on strategy. So subject to a private equity player getting the kinds of rights normally associated with investments in private companies, I don't see a problem with private equity funds per se investing in uh, listed companies. I think there's a logic for it. Uh, but that said, you know, the rights that they receive and the kind of role and the interventions they can make with promoters should be commensurate with what a private equity player is expected to perform. Otherwise, LPs would really be justified in asking why they have to pay fees uh, to a private equity fund that is investing in the public markets which the LPs have equal access to. There's been a lot of uh, debate, uh, particularly in the Western world, in the United States and in Europe, on restrictions that ought to be imposed on some of these alternative investment avenues because of the systemic risk that they might pose. The situation in India is very different for private equity, particularly because funds don't really raise uh, leverage, don't raise debt. Uh, the systemic risk element is actually missing in India. And so in India to try and replicate some of the restrictions that are being imposed on private equity players in other markets, I think is premature. Uh, private equity in India is relatively new. Uh, all said and done, the industry really has grown in the last 10 years or so. And I think it would be premature to start imposing uh, strict restrictions and regulations on how you can invest. Recently, for instance, the Indian government imposed and then was very quickly forced to withdraw uh, restrictions on the kinds of options which private equity funds typically secure uh, from promoters. Uh, so these options are being classified as external debt with all kinds of constraints. That fortunately has been withdrawn. But the thinking about private equity that this is a class of, of, of asset, this is a kind of funding activity that needs to be strongly controlled, uh, I think the parallels with the West are misplaced because in India so far at least the quantum of funds that have been raised relatively small in the scheme of things and India and Indian entrepreneurs need much more of that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I think one can debate the reasons for uh, there being this, this so-called governance deficit in India. You see it not just in private companies, you see it in public sector companies, you see it in the government, and you see it in bureaucracy. Uh, it goes back, I think, in India's history uh, to our uh, having a scarcity economy for uh, almost 40 years after Indian independence, uh, for the kind of socialist thinking that prevailed and the strict controls and curbs that were placed on all kinds of economic activity. It's only in the last 20 years that India is emerging into a kind of free market. And so you will see uh, potential for abuse, you will see um, issues with, with promoters. Uh, but everyone is learning, uh, and I think for private equity funds, they are learning to spot uh, the right kinds of promoters, they are learning to uh, identify ways in which you can align your interest with those of the promoters of the companies and not leave any incentive for people to feel that uh, you know, somebody needs to be uh, disproportionately rewarded for the effort that they're making. Um, but that said, in India, I think you have to be extremely careful uh, that you back the right party, you engage with the right kinds of promoters and develop relationships with them. That requires people on the ground who understand the market. Uh, it's not something you can uh, remote control from, from an overseas geography. And India is certainly not a market where you can count on documentation and contracts uh, to protect your downside position. Uh, I think you have to make the investments to identify the right kinds of partners.